Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we focus on one of the top machine learning algorithms in data science interviews, decision trees. Decision trees is one of the most common asked algorithms in interviews, among its random forest, gradient boosted trees, logistic regression, and support vector machines. Often, interviewers ask you about not only how an algorithm works, but also the advantages and disadvantages of that algorithm. And that is exactly what we are going to cover in this video. We will look at what is a decision tree, how is a decision tree model trained, and finally, we will look at the pros and the cons of the decision tree algorithm. Let's dive in. Decision trees is a commonly used machine learning model, and it can be used for both classification and regression tasks. Decision trees are non-parametric models, meaning the complexity of the model grows with the number and size of the training data. Here is what a decision tree looks like. This tree is trained using the iris data from sklearn. There are four features which represent different characteristics of a flower, and the target has three classes representing three different types of iris. A decision tree is trained to predict the type of iris based on the flower characteristics. We can visualize the trend decision tree in Python. It looks like a binary tree, and each node contains some information. Let's take a look at the information we get from each node. There are five lines of information in each node. The first line shows which feature is split on and what is the splitting threshold. For every data point in the data, if this is true, the data point will go to the left child node, otherwise it will go to the right child node. The second line is a Gini index, which is a purity measurement of the labels in the node. Higher Gini index means the labels are not pure, which means that we have a mix of different labels. You can see the root node has a high Gini index. On the other hand, in the leaf node, where it contains only one type of label, the Gini index is zero. The third line shows the number of samples or data points that are considered in this node. Next, the values show the number of samples in each class. For example, in the root node, all classes have 50 data points. In the leaf node, the only two samples are both in the second class. The last line class shows the major class in that node. To make a prediction, we take a data point, walk from the root node all the way to the leaf node. Then we can make a prediction based on the majority class in the leaf node. Let's take a look at how this trees is built. In general, the root node contains all the training data, so we have a high diversity of the labels. So the purity of the data label is the lowest. By splitting the data, we try to reduce the diversity of the labels or increase the purity of the labels. And finally, in the leaf node, the labels become pure and there's no diversity at all. To make a split, the decision tree model takes a brutal force and greedy approach. The algorithm scans through all possible splits for every feature and finds the best split of the data. To determine which one is better, we use purity measurement, usually Gini index or entropy. Now, let me give you an example to illustrate it. First, we need to find the best split of a feature. Let's say feature A. We can solve the data set based on the feature and check every possible split between two adjacent values. For each split, we will measure the increase in the label purity resulting from that split. Once we find the best split of feature A, we repeat this process for all other features. Then we select the feature with the best split, and that's the next split for tree node, again based on the measurement of purity. In this way, we repeat the splitting method from the root node all the way to the leaf node until the data label is pure. Now you understand how decision trees work. Let's talk about some pros and cons of decision trees. The first advantage of a decision tree is that it's easy to understand and interpret. It is often helpful to look at the resulting tree to see which features are important to the target and how the target is derived from the split. Features that are used for splitting earlier or more often are considered to be more important. For this reason, we can start out with training a decision tree model on the dataset to understand the data, even if we want to use other models for prediction later on. The other advantage of decision trees is the training and the predictions are relatively efficient. So training a decision tree can be relatively fast. For training, the algorithm will simply find the best split in each node 
by looping through all the data points and the features in that particular node. In comparison, many parametric models start with some random guess of the values of a parameter. We need to loop through all the data points to make small adjustments to the parameter, which is counted as one iteration. We will need hundreds or even thousands of iterations to get the desired parameter for the model. So in that aspect, training decision tree is more efficient than most parametric models. In terms of making predictions, it's efficient as well. We simply take a data point and follow the split by each tree node, then arrive at a leaf node. On the downside, decision trees are prone to overfitting, especially if we have data that has lots of features and we don't specify any restriction on the splitting criteria. The decision tree will keep splitting until the data in the leaf node have the same label. This can cause overfitting problems. Imagine we have an outlier. The decision tree will try to create some unnecessary splits for that outlier. Here we have some sample plots with two classes, red and blue. On the left, when there are no outliers, the classification boundary looks reasonable. On the right plot, when some outliers are introduced, the classification boundary starts to get complicated due to overfitting. In summary, the decision tree model uses a tree-like structure to specify a series of conditions that are tested to determine the label for a sample. It is constructed by repeatedly splitting a data partition into more homogeneous subsets. The resulting tree is often easy to interpret. Now you have a good idea of how decision trees work. Let me know if you have any questions or if there are other machine learning topics you'd like me to talk about. Thanks guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.